Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and today we're back live for another build of the day. You'll notice today we're not in Studio One. Today we're actually at one of our prep stations. This is an area in the shop where if you're booking an order and want to come in and build up here in shop, you're more than welcome to and spend as long as you need to going through your order, building it up, making sure that everything's working the way you need it to. Uh, if you're doing a gimbal setup, you know, place for you to, to make sure everything's connected the way you need it to and everything's working before you get to set. Very handy place to be. And uh, today we're gonna use it to talk about some lighting. Uh, this is kind of a tie-in to uh, our video that we did last week, which was about uh, self-recording and how to very quickly and easily record yourself for direct-to-camera stuff. And today we're gonna be talking about very, very simple, basic lighting setups. The first part of that is what's called the uh, light panels one by one Astra kit. This is a really helpful two light kit which fits into this small rolling case right here and we have a nice soft box to throw on top of that to soften that light out. If we cut to one of our wide shots you'll notice we're actually lighting me right now with this kit right here. I have a Astra in the back, which is my edge light here, which is at about 30% output, just to fill out my shoulder a little bit and separate me from the background. And then we have our fill light right over here, which is another Astra, running at about 60% with a soft box with a soft diffusion panel in front of it, just to help knock that light down. And I wanted to purposely shoot in front of the large window here, because oftentimes when you're out trying to do a very simple uh, interview setup or something like that, you're often gonna have to supplement daylight or natural lights in some capacity. And shooting with, with a window is a kind of very real world scenario that people run into. One of the things I do wanna stress at the beginning of this video though, is just the subjective nature of lighting. Anytime you're gonna be lighting a scene, you have decisions that you have to make in terms of the creative design of the lighting. And when we're talking cinema lighting, people have spent a long time creating and dissecting the lighting setup to create mood and character and have shadows fall in the right way. And oftentimes you're spending hours upon hours crafting a lighting setup to really set the tone for the scene that you're shooting. Today's video is not about that. Today's video is very simple, quick and easy broadcast style lighting to have a really nice even light over your subject so you can shoot a really nice quick interview. If you guys are interested in seeing a more complex lighting video, comment below and let me know, and we can certainly highlight those in a future video and dig more into uh, diffusers and controlling light and a lot of the different lighting fixtures that we have to create those. Today, though, we're going to use our Astra kit, and I'll show you guys how to put this kit together. One of the big things I love about the Astras is their lightweight. I can throw them up on the table here, and I'll pop this open so you guys can see. Everything packs into one case, which is really nice and helpful for travel. We can ship these cases around the country, so even if you're not in Chicago, we can get you this kit right here, which is very compact and easy to travel with. And it comes with stands right inside the kit. These stands, while not the beefiest or tallest stands, are great for a low pro profile stand that you don't wanna take up too large of a footprint for just a basic setup like we're doing right now. So I'll go ahead and spread my feet out. Now, I think it's a common misconception when you're setting up these feet to run them perfectly flat on the ground. Uh, people think that that's the, the best way to set them up, but you'll notice that our ends of our stand here actually have the rubber footing here to dig into the ground and make sure that our stand's not slipping. So what you actually wanna do is go with a slight angle so that just those rubber tips are hitting the ground. And we'll do something right about like that and lock that guy down. Now these stands are gonna have a max height of right around seven feet. So you're not gonna be able to go too high, but the nice thing with the uh, Astra panels are that they'll fit onto any standard baby spud. So we have it on uh, two C stands for what we're lighting with today. And you could also use one of these lightweight stands if you wanted to put it on a rolling stand or something like that. Very, very flexible in that regard. I'll go ahead and pull one of the panels out. And you'll notice 
It's called a one by one because the panel itself is exactly a foot by a foot. Light Panels has been making these lights for years now, and the Astras are just the newest iteration of that. You'll notice we have all our LEDs here with a little bit of a panel in front to help protect those. And on the back of the panel, we'll have our main controls. We have a three pin XLR for power, which can run either from our gold mount battery plate here, or every kit will also come with a AC adapter that can snap in. Now the AC adapter is very helpful if you don't uh, have batteries as an option or just need to shoot for a very long time. But I really like the flexibility of going cableless and using batteries. So for today, instead, we are going to run a PTAP cable and use an Anton Bauer 90 watt hour battery. This will give you approximately 50 minutes of runtime at full output. So even for a basic interview, you're still gonna be able to do the full interview on one battery. If you're doing a large take, you're gonna wanna potentially look at either a larger battery or something like that. But it's just as simple as taking the P-tap end and we're gonna mount that into the side P-tap on our plate there. And then I will plug our three pin XLR into the back. From there, your power switch is just right here and you'll see it turn green as soon as we boot on. And with that, we are on and we have light. I do wanna dim this down and show you guys. I'll flip it around so our camera can see. And I hope our output's low enough that we can make that out. But this is a bicolor light, meaning I have LEDs for both daylight and tungsten. This would be my daylight. Those would be my tungsten and I can go in the middle and you'll see both of them are lighting up. Bring that up just a little bit so you can see those. Uh, that means you can be very flexible with your color temperature while you are shooting. Because you know if you're shooting daylight next to a window like this, naturally we're going to wanna match daylight. But if you're indoors in like a hotel room or something like that, you're gonna wanna shoot tungsten to match those tungsten bulbs as well. And the Astras give you the flexibility to adjust within those. If you wanna do a mix of both to be somewhere around like a 4200, 4800 Kelvin, you can make those decisions, which is really, really helpful. Uh, for someone like me, I'm a big fan of what's called mixed temp lighting. You'll notice it if you look back to a lot of our builds of the day. My edge light is almost always tungsten and my front facing lights, my key and my fill, are almost always daylight. And that's just because of my creative choice. I like to have that different color to kind of separate me from the background. And the Astras are giving you that creative option to choose whichever you would like for your scene, which is really helpful. The other piece that's super, super helpful is this guy right here, which is our Camara LED light bank. You'll notice I'm using it in two different ways in our setup right now. My fill light has the soft diffusion on the front of it and my edge light doesn't, but I'm still using the soft box to act almost like a barn door to just help direct the light a little bit and make sure I'm not getting too much spill off on my background or anything like that. You can use it in either way, but the setup is gonna be the same. I'll open up our bag and pull out the cover. This is a snap grit or snap bag basically. Inside are bands that snap open to be straight. And we have these series of loops on the side. To start putting it on, I'm just gonna take my loops and loop them around each thumb knob on the side of my yoke. And that's going to make sure that my softbox doesn't go anywhere while I'm trying to mount it to the actual light. Once I have those secured, I'll then go through each corner of the softbox and there are two straps, one on the inside to make sure that it doesn't fall behind the light, and then a strap on the back that'll wrap around the light to hold it in place. So I'll go ahead and I'll flip around so you guys can see this as I'm putting these on. And I will set each strap around each corner, like so. And then you'll notice in our front, we have our soft box lined up like so. Make sure our stands stand nice and locked down there. 
And then we have our soft diffusion panel. This is this piece here. Very, very easy to mount. There's Velcro on the sides here. So I'm just going to take this and line it up on the Velcro, making sure that it connects all the way around. And now we have our soft box mounted. And we can then dial our output up a little bit. And now you'll notice this entire soft box has become a source. And it's just going to give us a nice soft light that's going to be much more wrappy than the standard light from the uh, light itself. And what I mean by wrappy is if you look at my hand here and how the shadows are actually rolling off of my hand, they're going to be much softer in their edges, and that's what we call a wrappy light. The shadows are wrapping around, or the light's wrapping around the, uh, the subject and the edges to create those soft shadows. A very, very helpful light to design a lighting setup. Now, just to go over a little bit in terms of how I set these lights up, a standard broadcast lighting setup is called a three-point lighting setup, and that's because you would want three points of light. So if we look at me right here, our first source would be our window, the big window in the corner that's just giving us a large amount of light. Typically you want that first source, it's going to be called your key, to be as big and soft as you can because that's going to be your main light that's lighting your subject. Then you're going to have what's called a fill. That would be my astro panel that's right over here. And that's going to be used just to fill the shadows on the side of the face that are created by the key light, just to fill the area out and manage how much shadow you want there. That's why it's running at about 60%, is because I want enough light that it lights me so there's not a ton of shadow, but enough that there's still some amount of uh, dimension in my face so you still can, can get a sense of the, the, the person or the subject that you're lighting. The third source you would then have would be my edge light that I have back here, sometimes also referred to as a backlight or a hair light or something like that. But that's just used to separate your subject from the background or to add a little bit of dimension to their shoulder or their hair just to help add a little bit more to the image. And with that, we've created a three-point lighting setup with our Astra panels, with our two kit using our window. But if you don't have a window, I have another kit that's going to be more suited for a three-point lighting setup. And that is our Aperture 120D 3 light kit. I'm going to clear off my table here, and I'll break that guy out so you guys can see. This is our Aperture light kit. You'll notice it is also extremely portable fits in one small road case. This is going to hold all three lights, stands, your ballasts, and everything you'll need for a very basic lighting setup all in one, which is very, very helpful. I'll go ahead and pop this up onto the table so you guys can see inside. I'm a huge fan of this light kit because there's just less stuff you have to bring with you. Everything packs into the one case, which makes transport very, very easy. To get started setting these lights up, I always like to start with my stands. And you'll notice right away, these stands are much beefier than the light panel stands. They're going to give you a little bit more height, and they're just going to be a little bit more stable. So for more complex lighting setups, they're going to be more ideal. And we'll go ahead and set these up. Similar to what we were talking about before, you want your base of your stand to be horizontal to the ground here. So we're going to set our mid-level spreader right here to be parallel to the ground. And that's how we set that up on the bottom. And then I like to first lower or raise my lowest level just a couple inches. And I'm raising it a couple inches because we're going to mount our ballast to that portion of the stand. This is our ballast here. This is essentially the piece that takes your voltage from the wall and converts it to the proper power that the light needs, and is also where all your controls are going to be. And it has an integrated Anton Bauer gold mount battery plate right on the back. So we're going to use the same Anton Bauer 90 batteries to power these lights as we're using for the Astro lights. 
then you have this really helpful clip with a little strap here, and that's what we're going to use to mount our ballast to the stand. To mount it, I'm just going to take this first loop, and I'm going to make sure that it's as wide as it can go, because it can shrink and cinch down to be smaller there. And we want it wide enough that I can mount it around the stand, like so. And then I'm just going to cinch it tight, and my ballast can then hang right at my stand. And I'll run a cable up to the light for power, and my battery will hang right there. So I can lift it up, adjust my settings and my output as I need, and I can just let it sit right there. Keeps everything nice and compact, and since we're using ba battery to power, we won't have to plug it into the wall, meaning we can be very quick and portable with our stand as we move around. It'll be very, very helpful for setting stuff up. This here is the Aperture 120D 2. It's a really nice lightweight light with a good amount of output. They have a 96 CRI rating, so they are going to be really nice and rich with their color. And they're balanced for 5,500 Kelvin, so it's daylight. And one of the nice features of the ballast here, or I'm sorry, the yoke here, is it can rotate around the entire light. So if we take off our cover here, you'll notice that my yoke can go all the way around the front of my light. So if I want to hang it, I can very easily, or I can mount it to my stand. And it makes adjusting that just a little bit easier. It seems like a small point, but if you ever are working in a broadcast situation where you're hanging stuff from a grid, it's a very, very nice feature to have. I'll go ahead and lock that down on the top of our stand. And we have a series of accessories that we can attach to this light. The first of which is this reflector here. And this is just a dome piece to mount on the front with a series of reflectors on the inside to help direct the light a little bit more so you're not getting as much spill on the edges. These mount with a standard Bowens mount, so if you have any of your own accessories, you're able to use them with the light as well, which is a really nice feature. And we can set this in and just do a small twist and you'll hear it lock into place. From here, we could just run the light like this if we wanted to, but we have some additional options for controlling the light as well. These are barn doors, and if we open them up on the inside of the barn door, we also have a, fil or a uh, gel holder. So if we're running gels or putting diffusion in front like that, we could use this. For today's purposes, though, we won't use it, so we'll set that aside. And then we also have a 30-degree honeycomb. And this is used just to help direct the light a little bit more and can help knock it down just a little bit to help control the light. It's optional, and we'll use it for some of the lights today, but not all of them. And to mount these, it's very, very simple. You have two hooks on the bottom and this little wire piece right here, which is just kind of a lever lock. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So it'll lock in place like that, and we just push down, and it'll lift up. So to mount our barn doors, I'm just going to hook the bottom, and I'll have that wire piece on top. And then I'm just going to push it down and let it fit into that ridge there. And that secures our barn door. Very, very quick and easy. And then lastly, we just have a XLR style cable here to run power from the ballast up to the light. So we can uncoil this, and we'll run one from our output here on the ballast, and one up to the power input, which is right below, right here. The 120D2s have an approximate output of about 1,000 watt tungsten Fresnel. So if you're familiar with older tungsten lighting, or about 135 lux, or 135,000 lux. So they still pack a punch into a small little light, which is a really nice feature, especially for matching daylight or overpowering a window or something like that. I can pop the battery on here and go ahead and power it up. And this would be at full uh, output on battery. And you'll notice it's, you know, it's a nice light right away, but we'll want to do some controlling to adjust it a little bit. I left the honeycomb in on this one, and I think this will be well suited for our fill light. But for our key, I want to look for a little bit more uh, softness to my light. For that, we're going to use a 
standard 2 by 3 silk, which is this right here. This is a two-stop silk, and silks are used just to soften and diffuse light. I'll adjust this in a way that the 120D is able to fill this entire silk. So this entire silk becomes a nice, large 2 by 3 source of light that's nice and soft and will help just give us that wrappy light that we're looking for. So I'll rig this from a C stand just in front of the light. And for that one, I think we'll go without the barn doors and we'll just use the dome. So let's go ahead and get the other two lights on and then we can kill the Astras and light this scene using our Aperture 120s. I encourage you guys to get creative with lighting. It's something that I think a lot of people tend to rush through, but one of the easiest ways to add mood or something like that to a scene is by adjusting your lighting and controlling how your shadows fall. If you think of any sort of uh, cinema scene or something like that, uh, in terms of like noir or a stylistic type of cinema, there's usually a lighting technique that comes along with those to help create that character and that feel. And it's a way to really easily control a scene. And I think it's something that a lot of people skip through and just go with something very quick and basic. And you can, it'll get the job done, but the more time and effort you spend into designing and creating the light, the more creative your image is going to be. And you can take a cheap camera that may not have the most dynamic range and make it look really, really good as long as you light the scene around utilizing as much of that dynamic range of that camera as you can. As long as you're creative with what you do and creative with how you light the scene, you'll be surprised what you can accomplish even with minimal amounts of gear. And our last light here. This kit also comes with remotes. We won't use them for today's setup, but I'll show them to you real quick. This guy right here, very, very helpful because you can set uh, particular ABC lights and adjust your output and everything from a distance, which just is very, very helpful. So if you don't have a DMX board and you're not able to route your lights through there, you can still have wireless control by using the remote to adjust your settings and things like that. It's just very helpful if you have a light really high up on a stand or something like that where you can't reach it easily and you don't want to have to pull that light down every time you want to change your output. It's really helpful to have the remote as an option. All right, and so now we have all three of our lights built. Let's go ahead and get these guys set up. I'm gonna bring our good friend Aristotle out. He's gonna be a stand-in for me while we're lighting, just so I can see how things are kind of hitting and make sure I'm lighting it the way I want. So I'll go ahead and bring him out. He'll stand in for us there. And let's go ahead and get our key light set up. So this is gonna be the one that's not running our barn doors, because I'm gonna be pumping that through the two by three silk. And I'm going to use this to emulate the sunlight that would be coming from the window. But I want it to be a little bit more powerful and I want a little bit more control over it. So I'll bring this light over here. And we're going to go ahead and raise him up as high as I can go because I want to be able to angle this to control my shadows a little bit. I 
tank right about there should be good. And then I'm just going to angle it down just a little bit towards Aristotle there. Let's go ahead and power this guy up so we can see how he's going. And I'm going to run this at a full, let's say 90% output. I don't want quite 100, but I want a good fair amount of output there. I'm going to go ahead and kill our Astra panels so we can see how this scene starts to light together as we introduce each new fixture. So you'll notice right away, you know, our lights, it's, he's lit, it's there, but our shadows are very harsh. There's a lot of hard edges to it. And there's just not a lot of dimension to the lighting that we're having. There's just one source coming in. There's a lot of shadow on the side of my face. So that's where our fill light will really come in handy. But let's knock this da light down a little bit by adding that 2 by 3 silk in front. That's just going to help diffuse that light down, soften it a bit. And I'm just going to run this into a C-stand knuckle here. And I'm going to rotate it to be about a 45 degree angle. And we'll raise that up to be in front of our light. I then want to position my silk so that it's getting fully lit up by the light. Like I said, we want that 2 by 3 silk to become one source all on itself. And now I can stand back in, and you'll notice just right away the shadows are much softer. There's less hard edges to it. And that 2 by 3 silk has done a nice job of just controlling that light a little bit and diffusing it. Let's go ahead and add in our fill light so we can see how that's going to pair in. And I'm going to bring that over to the side here. And same thing, we'll raise it up about as high as we can go. And we'll go ahead and power him on. And I'm going to run this one at about 50% output because I'm not putting a diffuser in front of it. I just have that honeycomb. I don't want it to be too hard of a light. And I can go ahead and stand back in. And we'll see how the shadows on the side of my face are just filled out a little bit. There's a little bit more dimension, but you can still see all of my face. And then we'll go ahead and add in our edge light. And this is really just looking to help put a little bit of light right here on my shoulder and just behind my head to separate me from the brick that's behind me. So I'll take this light here, and we're just going to bring it, same thing, about 45 degrees behind my subject here. And I'll grab our last battery. And we'll raise him up. Now, you can be creative with this light. I'm a big fan of a hard edge light. I just like that look. But once again, I encourage you guys to experiment and figure out what's going to be best for your particular scene and what you're doing. Because you don't want it to be you know, a basic setup. You want to you know, be creative and design your lighting a little bit to look the way that you want it to. I have it at, let's say, 35% right now. And we'll see how that looks. And we'll move Aristotle over to the side here. I like to have a stand-in when I'm lighting just so that I can direct my lights the way I want to. Because I don't want to put my lights in and realize that my edge light is actually slightly off to the side or missing its mark by a little bit. But this would be a very quick, basic setup. I think we set our lights up in about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 at most. But I think it's just a very clean, simple setup to have a daylight balance interview for our main camera here. I could easily talk to camera and have that interview and have it look fairly good. So if you're trying to do self-shooting or something like that, and you're looking for a simple lighting setup because you haven't worked with lighting before, the Aperture Kit or the Astra Kit would be a very good fit to have a few lights all in one portable easy kit that's going to match together really well to create that three-point lighting setup. As I said at the beginning of the video, guys, lighting is very subjective. If there's things that you would have done differently, comment below, let me know. Or if there's lights that you're interested in seeing, let me know and we can highlight those in future videos. 
We talked about a little bit about cinema lighting, about controlling light and things like that, but we didn't really dig into a complex lighting setup to create mood for a scene or something like that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, comment down below and we can highlight that in a future video. As always, guys, this is a build of the day. We're coming live at 5 p.m. every Tuesday to give you a different build, whether it's cameras, lights, or whatever we have. So if you want to see a different piece of gear, let me know as well, and we'll highlight that. We're streaming live today, and if you guys are interested in streaming, we have all the gear that you need to do that. We even made a video about how to quickly and easily get started streaming. So if you need help with that, go ahead and check that video out as well or check out perfectcircle.pro. Our partners over there can hook you up with an operator and gear so that you can focus solely on the creative side. If you don't wanna have to deal with lights or anything like that, you just focus on the information that's gonna happen inside the stream and we can have an operator come out to help set up everything to take the stress off of your shoulders. So if that's something you guys are interested in, check out perfectcircle.pro. As always guys, this has been a build of the day. I'm signing off, but I'll plan to see you guys next week on Tuesday for another one. I'll see you then.